What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here, as always, on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and today I'm going to start the next trilogy that I'm going to feature here on the channel from 1990, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, starring Judith Hogg, Elias Cotillas, James Sato, Brian Tochi, Corey Feldman, Josh Payas, Robbie Rist, and Kevin Clash. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me today here on another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. This is going to be a fun one, man, because I remember seeing all three of these films in theaters when I was younger. Um, back in Long Beach where I'm originally from, we had a movie theater called the Paradise Theater. And it was a one-screen theater. They would show two movies at a time, usually in a double feature format. And they were such an old-school family mentality that you could pay for a movie and just stay in there all day. And I can't tell you how many weekend days I would sit in there watching at least one, if not two showings of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, because I loved the original so much. So this one is going to be fun for me. Let's get down to it. Now, a crime wave is on the rise in New York City, and many of the Japanese residents feel that the crime pattern kind of mirrors something that happened in Japan many years prior. Reporter April O'Neill, while investigating the crimes, unearths this information. And she has no reason not to believe the Japanese citizens. April tries to tell her boss, Charles Pennington, as well as police chief Stearns, the New York City Chief of Police, all of this information about the Japanese crime wave. Neither one of them want to hear it. They both dismiss her theory. It turns out that April and the Japanese citizens of New York are right. The Foot Clan is behind the rise in chaos. And their leader, the Shredder, orders the clan to silence April. April is attacked twice by the Foot Clan. First, outside of the news station, as she's returning to her van after work, a ninja Sai is thrown and breaks the street lamp, and our heroes swoop in out of the shadows, save April, and tie up the thugs. Now, after this attack, our heroes return to their homes. Of course, our heroes are the Ninja Turtles. And Raphael admits that he lost a side because April picked it up when she saw it laying on the ground there. In order to kind of cool himself a little bit, Raphael goes out to a movie. After he's done with the movie, he chases a couple of thugs through Central Park, and he ends up encountering Casey Jones. And Casey Jones and Raphael have what is arguably my favorite scene in the entire trilogy, where they're going back and forth in a game of wits. You know, a Jose Canseco bat? Tell me you didn't pay money for this. Casey whaps him with it. Two for one sale, pal. Cricket? Nobody understands cricket. You got to know what a crumpet is to understand cricket. Just this whole exchange really sets up 
Raphael's personality and the dynamic that he'll have with Casey throughout the film. And back to the story here. The second time April is attacked, it's on the subway platform and she's knocked unconscious. This time, Raphael's around. He's been kind of trailing April in an effort to get his psi back. Our hero carries April back to their lair in the New York sewers. And she's introduced formerly to all of our heroes. Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, the one who brought her there, Raphael, and of course, their master, Splinter. Splinter begins to tell April their origin story how he found the baby turtles crawling in an ooze and scooped them into a coffee can. And the next day, they had doubled in size. And they continued growing as Splinter grew as well, not only in size, but in intellect. And the turtles began to mutate into a more human looking turtle form being able to walk talk etc splinter had originally been a pet rat of a ninja master and he began to teach the turtles the art of ninjutsu that he had learned by watching his master from his cage the turtles take april home and they hang out together all night getting to know each other eating pizza, Michelangelo doing impressions. And when they return home, they discover that their lair has been ransacked. Splinter's missing. They return back to April, not knowing what to do. We're going to veer off a little bit because we have to introduce another important character to the story, that of Danny Pennington. Danny Pennington is the son of Charles, April's boss. And Danny kind of sort of works for the Foot Clan. You know, he's, he's a prospective member. He hasn't earned the rights to wear the Foot Soldier suit yet. He's still just a petty thug for them going out and stealing for them. Well, one day, Danny gets arrested. And after having to bail his son out of jail, Charles and Danny stop by April's place. And Danny ends up catching a glimpse of one of the turtles under a table. Knowing that his master Shredder is looking for the turtles and knowing that this kind of information might put him in the Shredder's favor, Danny tells the Shredder about the turtles and where they are. At April's place, Leonardo and Raphael have an argument, as they tend to do. These two are always butting heads. Raphael goes to the roof of April's apartment building, clears his head a little bit, and the Foot Clan ambush him. He's knocked unconscious. The Turtles, with the assistance of Casey Jones, scramble to defend themselves in April. The building ends up catching fire during the fight, and the group of April, Casey, and the Turtles retreat to a farm that's owned by April's family. Leonardo keeps watch over Raphael as he recovers very slowly. And seeds begin to get planted here a little bit for a potential April and Casey romance. Very much a love to hate relationship at first, but you can feel the tension between the two of them. Once Raphael has fully recovered, 
The Turtles begin to train for their eventual rematch against the Foot Clan. They're even able to contact Splinter via astral projection. Splinter speaks to them, tells them how, you know, proud he is of them and how much he loves them. They decide it's time to go home. They cannot remain in hiding any longer. Now, while all this is going on, Danny has been secretly growing close to Splinter. He's been seeking counsel with him to an extent, talking to him about his issues with his father. And so one day, Splinter tells Danny the story of who he was. Not necessarily the same story that we heard about the origin of the turtles, but more about where Splinter came from. He tells Danny the story of a man named Hamato Yoshi, who was Splinter's owner, and how Hamato Yoshi was murdered by a man named Orokusaki over a female. Typical, typical story here, you know. Orokusaki murders Hamato Yoshi over a female. However, during the fight between Orokusaki and Hamato Yoshi, Splinter's cage opens up. And Splinter lunges at Orokusaki's face and he bites and scratches him. Saki throws Splinter onto the floor and with one swipe from his katana blade, slices Splinter's ear. So when Danny discovers that the Shredder is planning to have Splinter killed, he and Casey, and Casey's at this point discovered and infiltrated the lair of the Foot Clan. He's not like trying to join them, but He's kind of milling around, seeing what he can uncover there. So Danny and Casey set Splinter free. Splinter tries to tell the young men who have been recruited by the foot that the Shredders brainwashed them to do his dirty work. Shredder doesn't care about you guys at all. And the boys, the young men begin to realize that Splinter is right, so they resign from the Foot Clan. In our final battle, the Turtles engage with the remaining members of the Foot Clan, defeat them rather easily. However, when they face off against the Shredder, he defeats each of the Turtles single-handedly. Leonardo's in danger, about to be killed by the Shredder. And the freshly freed Master Splinter appears. Splinter challenges Shredder and calls him out by his real name, Orokusaki. Shredder takes his mask off and touches his scar, remembering the way that Splinter gave it to him. Shredder tries to charge Splinter to spear him, but Splinter uses one of Michelangelo's nunchucks, flings Shredder over the roof with his spear caught on the nunchuck and his body is dangling off the roof. Shredder goes to grab a tanto, like a little dagger, in a last-ditch effort to kill Splinter. He throws it at him. Splinter catches it, but in turn, his grip on the nunchuck is released. Shredder falls into a garbage truck, and Casey, oops, pulls the lever to activate the trash compactor on the garbage truck, which just crushes Shredder. Police and the media arrive to arrest the Foot Clan soldiers that remain. The teens 
that are there tell the police the location of the foot hideout where they can find all the stolen merchandise. Charles and Danny are reunited and Charles gives April her job back because he had previously fired her during the big battle at her apartment prior to the farm retreat. He fired her over the phone. But now, having proven that she was right all along, he gives her her job back. The turtles and Splinter watch from the rooftop as April and Casey finally kiss, and our film comes to an end. Like I said at the start of this film review, Ninja Turtles. I have loved the Turtles for a very long time. I'm not much of a comic reader, so I'm not a big fan of the comic Turtles. Like, I've never really read the, the comic Turtles. But going back to the late 80s cartoon, my first introduction to them, to these movies... I stopped watching the cartoons after the late 80s one ended because I was just getting kind of too old for cartoons at that point. But when they did the CGI version of the Ninja Turtles in the early 2000s, I watched it and kind of enjoyed it. I mean, I always kind of preferred either the classic animated turtles or these guys in the rubber suits. As hokey as they kind of looked for today's standard, back in 1990, man, they looked damn good. And then even the newest film series that they did there with Megan Fox as April O'Neil, I enjoyed that series as well. Um, but yeah, like the Ninja Turtles have always been a special place in my heart. And while watching the series this time, I kind of made a parallel from these movies to the Batmans of the Burton Schumacher verse. And each day as I do a movie for the Turtles trilogy, I'm going to tell you where I feel that they land. You know, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the one that I just reviewed today, that's the classic 89 Tim Burton Batman with Jack Nicholson as the Joker. You know, dark, gritty, humorous at the right points, but not over the top in its comedy. You know, Parents said that this Ninja Turtles film was way too violent with the amount of usage of their martial arts weapons. This, this film is the Tim Burton Batman of the series. <clears throat> like I said, it's dark, it's gritty, it does have a sense of humor, but it's not over the top. When it comes to my rating for the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm going to give it four and a half out of five stars. I can't in all good consciousness give this a five stars. But I do, I do give it four and a half out of five. It's a damn good movie. And even today, some 31 years later. It's still a damn good movie. This was also one of the last major productions that Jim Henson worked on. The Jim Henson Creature Shop did the designs of the Ninja Turtle suits. All of you guys knowing what a big fan I am of Jim Henson should surprise you very little how much, you know, I love this film as it relates to Jim Henson. I mean, 
Master Splinter Ever is Kevin Clash. And for those of you that don't know the name Kevin Clash, Kevin Clash is the first. He's not the originator of the character because it had been performed by other people prior, but he is the first major full-time performer of Elmo from Sesame Street. When you think of everything that Elmo stands for and represents, that was Kevin Clash. He's the one that brought all of that to the character. Kevin Clash stepped away from Sesame Street quite a few years ago, ago now, almost a decade ago, I want to say. So Elmo has been recast. Someone else performs Elmo now. But for the entire heyday of Elmo, the Tickle Me Elmo craze, Elmo and Grouchland, Elmo has been Kevin Clash. So you've got that right there going for it. And then all my diehard Henson fans are going to hate me for this. So I'm blanking on the guy's name right now. But the man who performs Telly Monster on Sesame Street also performed some of the controls for the facial features of, I want to say it was either Leonardo or Donatello. So you've got quite a bit of Henson family inside of this film as well. What do you guys think of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Let me know. Leave your thoughts in the comment box below as always. Let's get out there on social media. Get those hashtags trending. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios. Hashtag Renegades Reviews. Hashtag Renegade Returns. And of course, the ever popular hashtag shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about... Merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Don't forget to do what that commercial just told you. Go to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network. Get you your official merchandise of the Jeff Meacham Network, the logo t-shirts, Meachamania, Talk Wrestling. Get you your official t-shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, your Renegade J.J. Williams shirt, Stat Boy Sports Bar, Dad's Not Always on Wrestling, and so much more. Tomorrow, right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, make sure you return for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews when I will be tackling from 1991 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. Thank you all for joining me. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you guys will tune in tomorrow. As we continue the Ninja Turtles trilogy. And I will see you all next time.